people have studied depression and psychological illness. The goal of psychologists was primarily to rid a patient of their problems. Recently, however, modern science has begun to look at how happiness works. What are the building blocks of a life that's not just free of illness, but one that flourishes with a deep and genuine happiness? When I got into happiness research, it was 1981. It was not a popular field in psychology. People thought it was flaky, that it was loose. A professor said to me, you can never measure happiness. Now why they thought you could measure depression, which they were all doing, but you couldn't measure happiness, I'm not sure. And then in the 90s, people started getting interested in it. And now it's absolutely amazing how many people are interested. Magazine articles and books are being written about it. There's even a new field of science called positive psychology, which studies happiness. It became the most popular class at Harvard, with a thousand kids showing up every week for a happiness class. The first thing is to realize that happiness can actually help you get your other goals. Have better relationships, make more money, do better at the job. People on the job are going to like you better if you're happy. What we've done, and I've done this for the last 25 years, collecting data. So we follow people and look at their moods over time. <laughs> we've also looked at random samples of people from around the world, who's happy, who's not happy. Then we crunch all these numbers and we say, gee, what really matters? By studying identical twins, people with almost exactly the same genetic makeup, Researchers have discovered that approximately 50% of the differences in our happiness levels is determined by our genes. They call that our genetic set point or our genetic set range. Most of us are born with a certain range of happiness that we fall in most of the time. And even when really good or really bad things happen to us, we kind of tend to return to our set point. And while 50% is genetic, amazingly, our circumstances like what job we have or how much money we have, our social status, our health, those things that many of us are told to focus on, they only account for 10% of the differences in our happiness. Most people are kind of stunned at how small that is, but that still leaves 40% unaccounted for. And so our, our theory suggests that there is a great deal you can do to become happier, and that 40% is left for kind of intentional behavior, you know, things that we can do on a regular basis to become happier. It's very important if a person wants to become happier to try not to adapt to what they're doing. So they would consciously vary what they do. It could be like when you do your daily run that you take a different route. I mean, that's not really, you know, mind boggling. For some people, it's going to be a lot of change. For some people, it's going to be a little, but that change is important. 